Welcome back to another fictionalhead.com essential training. This series is dedicated to topics, two topics I feel are essential to understand the software we use as designers. Uh, they're a little less tutorials and a little more concept and process. So today's concept that you should really get used to is for InDesign, and that's the concept of master pages. Um, I'm once again inside of my thumbnail file for the essential training series, which makes this kind of meta, but the whole purpose of master pages is that you can set up sort of default chunks of content that are ready to be used or reused in any document that has similar paging. So brochures or video thumbnails, I mean, literally anything that uses a similar layout should be done with a master page. So when you go to your pages panel, usually under pages, it's up already, but if it's not, um, you can apply a new master, apply a master to page, make some new master pages. Um, when you make that new master, it asks you for sizing options and everything. And when you're in there, anything that you make um, still obeys all the rules of your layering system over here, which is super nice. Because if you ever want to make sure that something is always on top of something else, just make sure it's higher in the layer stack. Um, but anything that you make then goes into your master file here. And then if you drag that master down onto some other page, um, it will change the page size. It'll pull in all those elements, but it keeps them locked exactly where they should be. And it allows you to sort of quickly templatize anything that you're working on. So for me, like this particular thumbnail video, or sorry, thumbnail file, I have one where there's just a blue background and there's one icon in the corner and that's here. I made a version where there's two icons in case there's two programs involved. And I made another where there's three in case there's three programs involved. Um, I can very quickly, if say this video involved two icons, just drag and drop it on there. And suddenly you see that it's updated to two. And if I drag and drop it on here, it's updated to three. But you might be wondering why isn't it blue in the background? Um, if I move this photo out of the way, you can see that that blue is still there. Um, it's being covered up by a different photo that I've used here. So it allows you to almost use the parts that are handy and disregard the parts that are not. And if you get to a point where you're like, well, obviously I wouldn't have three of the exact same icon. It's kind of pointless to have a master page for that. You can hit control and shift to pull I call it pull through, but basically it lets you grab the content from the master page and make it editable. So I usually drop the icon or drop the page for multiple icons on here, pull through the other two that aren't correct. And then this lets me go in here and edit it and grab something different or drop in a different photo or do anything like that. That would um, alter what goes in that box. The cool thing is, once you've gone in and done that, <clears throat> so like let's say I drop this into this box instead. If I have built it successfully with a master page to begin with, when I go back to this master, if I ever decide to move this box, say to here, I don't know why I would do that, but say to there, it'll actually move that box because it knows this one was part of the master layout, but it leaves the content alone. And I think that really is sort of the the key guts of why master pages are so quick and efficient at doing things is you can set up sort of generic layouts for yourself um, and manipulate large volumes of content without having to worry about all your links and things like that. So if I ever get to a point where I've got like 40 different thumbnails in here, but then I want to move everything to the other side, I can just pop into my master page, move my, um, master layout to the other side. And then when I hop in here, you can see every one that had that icon has been moved over to the other side. I can go through and um, you can actually tell I didn't do this one correctly because I had placed a link there. But it allows you to sort of quickly pull things through, quickly edit things. Um, and then as you adjust your master page to do something different, it'll update the content, but leave the master elements alone in terms of their scaling and things like that. So that's the tip. 
Uh, if you found it helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you want more of these types of concept videos, be sure to check out others in the Essential Training series. As always, if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. See you next time.